And let's get more now on the situation in Binghamton. Joining us live from our New York studios is Christopher Falkenberg. He is a former special agent with the U.S. Secret Service and currently heads up Insight Security. Um, Richard, let's get right to it because authorities have identified the gunman as Liverly Wong, a man in his 40s. But what are investigators looking for as they try to determine a motive here? Well, the first thing that investigators have to preclude is the possibility that anybody else is involved. And I think it's pretty clear at this point that that's not the case. The second issue is something that law enforcement and what we do uh, at Insight Security frequently, which is look at major criminal events after they've occurred and do what's called a psychological postmortem, taking a look at all the factors that led this individual to react violently, you know, the purpose being so that in the future we're better able to identify violent behavior before it, it it begins and to intervene and stop it. Mm. It's going to take some time to get some answers on this one as to the motive behind this attack. But uh, let's broaden out the picture here and see what we can learn from it. Is there a best way to survive something like this? Well, I, I regardless of what the nature of the emergency is, the most important thing to do when a sudden crisis envelops you is to be able to think and to take immediate action, to have a bias for action and to act on it. So what we do at Insight, you try to find a means to help people in emergencies is to train them to overcome the instinct to just freeze. What happens when up is down and left is right? A shooting, a plane crash, any sudden emergency like that really takes people and their orientation totally out of whack and so it's incredibly important to be able to react quickly and not to freeze. In this case it was two examples, there were two examples of that. The first is the woman who acted dead at the reception area and the second is the teacher and students who barricaded themselves in the uh, in the basement. Mm -hmm. So those are both examples of people who uh, uh, took initiative and acted and by doing so saved their lives. And, and it, in my view, I think that's the most important thing that one can train somebody in when dealing with security issues. What we are learning about the gunman is that uh, this suspect uh, is believed to have lost a job recently. And as we look at the big picture here once again, um, are you seeing violence ramp up in, in times like this and recessions like this? Well, the path to violence is a, generally a long and predictable one. And so something that we do at Insight all the time is dealing with corporations and clients who have people who seem to be suffering emotionally, the question always being whether or not that emotional, those emotional problems are going to spiral down and they'll react violently. So the, the way to deal with that is to have mechanisms in place is to recognize when people are decompensating and not dealing well with multiple stresses. Okay, so what do you do that in order to, for people out there to have the information to prevent something like this from happening, if that's so, even possible? Well, I think it is possible. It's going to, you know, there's so much workplace violence. It's unclear at this point what the relationship is between the shooter and the Civic Center, although much has been said that, that he had a relationship there. So we don't know if he'd uh, been there previously, if he'd been making threats, but frequently situations arise in the workplace or at school where Regular people, employers, receptionists, bosses can be trained to recognize the signs of incipient violence. Not to the extent that we ask them uh, to make a determination, oh, this person's dangerous and they should be arrested, but that they can bring that to the attention of security professionals, threat assessment professionals, who can then make a determination of whether intervention is warranted. When that can be done, when that can be done effectively, and when the groundwork is laid effectively in corporations and in schools to recognize these sorts of problems, you can have great results. And we've had great results in, in precluding and stopping what could have been uh, real emergencies, real crises prior to their development. All right, Christopher Falkenberg, we do appreciate your time and insight it's today. It's my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you for having me.